Oh. What's up, everyone? It's your boys, Brandon with Deed, coming back at you again. It's been a minute, but we're back. That's my fault, unfortunately. It's true. I apologize. Nah, not unfortunately. I just came back from thing. a winter camp from at Camp St. Nicholas. Shout out Camp St. Nicholas. Um, what a blessed time. But I'm ready for some sports because this weekend piped off with a bunch of different things. So I'm ready. I'm locked and loaded for yeah. today. And you missed it all. I did. Let's do it. Uh, let's start off with – let's switch it up a bit. Let's start off with a little soccer because MLS okay, comes like back it. this weekend. I'm excited for it. Big Lane United fan, as y'all probably have, could tell from past ones already, but I'm excited. Love soccer. Can't wait for it. I really have no clue what to expect this season because there's been so many off-season moves from teams. But now what I know you are on, you're more big-name soccer players. So let's, let me just go straight off the bat. Neymar talked about how before he retires, someone asked him if he'd want to go back and play in Brazil or not. And instead of Brazil, he was like, I want to possibly come to America and play in MLS, basically. You think it's possible, not just for Neymar, but other big name players to come to America to play soccer before they retire? Okay. So this is my feeling about like those types of guys, right? Like those upper echelon types of guys, Ronaldo, Messi, Zlatan, Neymar, whatever. I'm with it. I'm hundred percent with it. I think that there's a, a lack in competition. So you could play yeah. a few more years right in the MLS and it not mean much but I think honestly at least for Neymar this would be the worst thing like specifically him I really don't want him to come and like I would like again I would love to see him play in person but in terms of his legacy and like his everything him coming here isn't going to mean much. You need UEFA championships. You need, like, League One with PSG. I get it when you retire, you're not going to have much, but I don't know. It feels weird to me. Like, it just feels like he – Ronaldo coming is different. Messi coming is different. But Neymar, like, he didn't establish himself well. Fair. To – he left Barcelona because he didn't want to be in Messi's shadow. He goes to PSG. Mbappe is definitely the guy there. Then Messi comes to Barcelona, uh, PSG from Barcelona. So what did he really do? He didn't do much. He needs to have his own team, have his own way. And if he could win at least two, at least two UEFA championships, then you could come to the U.S. If not, I don't want to see you. Unfortunately. Okay. What happens if he does the, the Zlatan route? Because you mentioned Zlatan. Zlatan came, basically conquered the MLS. They didn't win it. But Zlatan showed he he was like, listen here, I'm a guy basically here. I'm going to score what I want, oh. do what I want here. And he went back to Europe. If Neymar yeah. came here for a couple of years and then went back to a team with no other, like, there's going to be superstars because it's Europe. But if you went back where there wasn't the Messi or the Mbappe or whatnot, at that point, if he won things here and then went back and won there, would it matter in your bid? Or does he have to win in Europe first? He has to win in Europe first. Okay. Because I feel like MLS has this reputation of being where, like the retirement home of soccer. Like that's the okay. reputation it has. Yeah. If you, yeah. you come here to retire, you don't come here to establish yourself and then go back and okay. then like show yeah. your work. Do it while you're in your prime. You yeah. need most – most of your time in of your prime dedicated to competitive international soccer. I don't want to see you until then. Zlatan proved himself. I mean, look at the freaking bicycle kick he had in the uh one of the world cups. I mean you can name it, you can name it just turn me. He's gonna have an amazing goal. It doesn't matter. Zlatan. Or like he will look at the guy that like no one knows and be like, hey, who the hell are you again? Like, yeah, this is Zlatan. Neymar is none of these things. He played in Bar uh, Brazil prior to going um, to Barcelona. I don't want to see you until you leave Europe with a chip of some sort. That's fair. That's fair. I respect More that. than just the league because you're in Brazil. Like, you're in France. Like, yeah. You know. That's fair. I mean, like, yeah, like you said, like, 
either the older players come to retire or when you're a younger young star who hasn't been in Europe, you establish yourself in MLS, hope to get sold off to Europe, which has happened as well. But yeah, for I, I definitely see that point. I would love Neymar to come here just because, like you said, I love seeing him in person. Okay. But but at the same time, like you're right, like if he comes here and he hasn't won much, like and then especially if he doesn't win in MLS, that's just gonna look bad. But so what team do you think he will come to? I mean is he going to pull like a Zlatan and go to Galaxy or is he going to try and switch it up? See, that there's so much debate because like you got Galaxy who's just, I mean, that's big name LA market. And then you also right. have LAFC who's also big name who has South American players coming in like Vela and stuff. And then you got Miami who's owned by David Beckham. So it's like you got them. Atlanta United, not right. just as a Atlanta United fan, but in general, they are like, they are a sexy name when it comes to like, young South American superstars coming up. Like we just signed another huge name player for like the most in MLS transfer history and stuff. So like, yeah. so maybe there, but at the same time, like you can pull a Rooney, go to New York. You, like it, it's really just, you know, it depends. Cause like, and it's just, I don't see him coming for, if he shows up, it's not going to be for another three or four years. I don't think. Absolutely. It just depends. But like, at that point, you're gonna have probably you could easily have two, two to four more teams as well. Given the big name markets already have a team, but if the right price is right, you know, maybe he's like, you know what, I'm gonna go to like a Chicago. I doubt it, but like he could go somewhere less big name and be like, let me make this a championship sit. But yeah. I, if I were, I mean, like sooner, I would say he's either going to LA for either of those teams, New York to either of their teams. Miami or Atlanta, just because you, those are the big name teams that can that will spend a lot as well. They all of those teams will show they will spend a lot. He's not going to go to Canada, like it's just not. He might yeah. go like I don't see him going to Texas. Like it's just like even though they're good teams, like you just don't. So I would just I would say he's going to one of the coastal cities, maybe Philadelphia, depending on how okay. they are. You know, in the year it's possible, but I don't I don't see him going to a smaller name. So. Do you think but, that the fact that he will go to a big name club in the MLS is in more of an indictment on him if he comes without a ring or a championship of some sort or a cup final? Like, I feel like he has to deserve that spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think because of who, with his name, he's going to automatically carry enough weight because he is name art. And so many people like, if you bring Neymar into your city, you're going to be selling tickets. You're going to be, you know, it's going to be a big name. Your team's going to get a boost and everything. So right. I see your point and I definitely think it's fair, but I, you're not like, it's the same thing. Like with all the other sports, you're not going to go to these tiny towns, you know, LeBron wasn't going to go over to like some random team when he left for uh, Miami. Like you're not going to go to these small places just because like you want a big market that can suit you as well. So. I think just okay. because of who he is and his name or not, he's going to have to go to a bigger market city. Okay. But I'm with that. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's really the biggest thing. I mean, given season hasn't started yet, but I mean, you got, you, you got your other clubs that are going through their little conf cap champions league, hoping to make it to the big, the big teams over in yeah. Europe if they win it. But for now, I'm just excited. Soccer's coming back. Seems like it's been too long, even though it's only been. Go DC. Yeah. Oh, I will. I will gladly go see your team lose. Uh, Okay. But But, I mean, keeping it on soccer, (laughs) everything with the World Cup, it's happening less than six months from now. This is true. And I mean, I'm excited for World Cup. uh, a, A few changes, a few countries currently have. I don't know if you heard of this, but currently have complained about Russia hosting some of those playoff games and everything happening with Russia and Ukraine. It's not just that. The Yeah. Yeah. I mean, same with, same with just Champions League and other matches and that, like any matches I've, I've, you know, I've heard players not, you know, not want to play there and whatnot. And I get not wanting to play. Like, it definitely sucks. Like, if you're Ukrainian, you got to play a match in Russia, you're not going to go do that. Whether or not you think it's right or wrong, I can, you know, I think it's fair. But if you're going to take things away from Russia, I feel like it's only fair you take things away from Ukraine as well, just for the Russian mm-hmm. players, even if it's not, even if it's not Ukraine's fault. Like, but at the same time, you know, I don't want, I, I'm not into politics when it comes to that stuff as much, but I just, I just, 
I love soccer. So I hope that, you know, everyone can stay safe and then we can just get everything in because not having world cup matches would suck. Like that, that would just be traumatic for everyone. But I don't know. What do you think about it? A lot to unpack. I mean, I think, you know, at a certain point, I'm with it. Okay, Ukrainian players going to Russia as Russia's invading Ukraine. That doesn't make sense to me. But for these third country, like these like out of the the loop countries coming in and saying like, hey, we're not going to play there. That's where I kind of have a problem. You know, it, it's unfortunate because I'm like, I'm with you, but they didn't have the games in Russia because of the stuff happening with Russia. They had the games in Russia because that's who it was time for. And if it, it's if, unfortunate if it everything more. happened. Sorry. If it escalates more, do you think if oh no, you're good. I say if it's if it escalates more, do you think they should pull more? Like if it becomes worse than what it is, like if it becomes more worse, countries get involved honestly, in then those countries in that area should not participate. And maybe that's a hot okay. take, but let's yeah, not distract that, that's, the issue. Let's not distract it. Like the World Cup, great and all, the whole world watches it. Everyone gets com- like confused. The Super Bowl is super big. Well, no, the World Cup, the entire globe watches it. There's not yeah. a place where it doesn't. If they're having issues and, like, God forbid it's a world war, maybe it's not time for the World Cup. Maybe we get it delayed again because of COVID it was the first time. Maybe now it's because of this. Um, that's not yeah. a distraction issue Possible. at hand. Let's focus on the things important. But if everything stays the same and it's, say, a Cold War situation – the countries involved immediately, if they complain, that's one thing. But I don't want to hear from Japan saying, I don't want to go to Russia. You know what I mean? Just like, you yeah. are fine. Yeah. Go play. And then come back. And then, that's fair. you know. Yeah. Yeah. But we're praying for them. And we're, we're hoping that, yeah. you know. Not Hope for the best for everyone. Safe and healthy. So, that's what matters. Yeah, exactly. Um. On a lesser lesser scale, of course, now because we can't really up that scale right there. But I mean, we, we like to stay woke on the podcast, right? We like to be why not? What up why here, not? and then like one kind of here, like it's that's what yeah. life is. Yep. Yeah. But on another thing that might get delayed, baseball, baseball season. If they don't have a deal by Monday, the season season will be pushed back. Games will be canceled. Pay will not happen for players, which is big. But it's also big is for your team right there, your team. Your young superstar Soto, this man turned down three hundred fifty million dollar deal, thirteen years. Why? As a national fan, why? Why? Okay, this this when I first saw the news, I was pissed because I was like, "This is our guy. This is the person that's going to carry us to a chip." Part of me is upset. The other part of me completely gets it. Ryan Zimmerman, when he retired, which is what we talked about in the last podcast, yeah. he was the heart and soul of the team. You lose the heart and soul of the team, what do you got? Just like a bunch of guys that know how to hit a baseball. So I don't blame him for turning it down. I wish he would have waited and held out just so that he could see what other offers he has on the table. At least know that at the end of the day, if no one else wants you, you have a bag to secure like you have it but yeah if i was him and like because i'm not much so of the the type of guy that's like i need him in my hometown like he gave us enough Juan soto he got us the 2019 championship against fuck the mastros right like he did what he needed to do he lived his purpose go make your money but also go to a championship team you know if you're gonna leave nationals go to a championship team you know the nationals Traded Max Scherzer, traded Trey Turner. Those were some key pieces to the Dodgers. I mean, it didn't matter much because the freaking Atlanta beat them. So, like, we don't have much. Respect the name, boy. Respect it. You got to respect us. Respect the chip. Respect the chip, right? But, you know, Nationals right now are in the rebuild. If I was Juan Soto in my prime, I would want to leave. So, it makes sense. I wish he stayed, but it makes sense. If you were to pick the team he goes to, if he becomes a free agent, not traded, free agent. Okay. 
So correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't wa- I, I forgot a lot of baseball from the last season. But wasn't right. the Marlins pretty good? Like the Marlins were really good. You, or you, someone you, from Florida was really good. Someone from Florida I mean, was Tampa really Bay's good. always been good. Tampa Tampa Bay is decent, but they just don't pay. They're they're known for like the lowest payroll. So if I was him, I would want to go for a team like that. If I was him, okay. if I had a choice, I would want to go because this kid is special. Like yeah. this kid could fucking play. Plain and simple. I mean, there's not much more to say. I don't want him to go to the Houston. I don't want him to go to the Dodgers. I don't want him to go to the Braves. I don't want him to go to any of those teams. I want him to go to a small market team that is already established. Pull a Tom Brady in that sense and win a chip. Because if he okay. was to go to Tampa, because I know there was a team in Florida that was pretty decent and people were considering yeah. them to be the, chip, the, the leaders in the World Series, to make it to the World Series. If he could do that in my, like, Tampa especially, I mean, he's literally in the conversation with Tom Brady. That's fair. I just I just don't see them paying him what he would want to be paid. Like he's, he deserves yeah. a massive contract, and they won't. But, I mean, that would – I mean, that would – that would be crazy, crazy move if he decided to do that. I mean, I would be blown away myself. I won't even lie, but well, did not see that one coming. But where do you see I mean, him? I mean, like, do you see him going to a big market? I see him going to a big market, but I don't see. I see him leaving the National League East. Like, he's not going to go to the Mets, to the Phillies, or the Braves. I don't see him going to LA just because they already have an outfield and everything. I could, maybe New York, but I just well, I don't I like want that. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know you wouldn't. I feel like if he leaves, honestly, I feel like he goes to the American League. I'm not sure what team, but I feel like he'd go to the American League, get out. Because, I mean, at this point, he's faced, he's faced you know, the National League left and right. So, he, he's tired of that. But, I don't know. I mean, that's that's a ways down the road. Right. So, like, he still has a couple of years no matter where he has to leave. So, at that point, maybe the Nationals get lucky with some draft picks and stuff and some trades, and they aren't in an utter rebuild. But we have to have baseball no matter what. If this lockout continues, nothing matters. So, seriously, like people are talking about Freddie Freeman not signing the Braves and going out. So I'm like, how can anyone know? They're not allowed to talk to each other right now. Like it's all, it's all just waiting for the, for the baseball commissioner and the you know board for the players talking to each other every day to decide on things. But can you explain? I to mean, there's the drama in every sport. What's what's exactly happening currently with MLB? Like, fill us in. As best as I can describe it, I'm going to look as well just to make sure I'm not missing points right now because more or less the the ownerships and, like, the commission and stuff, they want – they're wanting the side, their side to have – the players want – complete, not complete. They're slowly agreeing, but at the same time very much not agreeing on the, the different terms that are needed to be talked about. And starting Monday, if they don't have an agreement in place, spring season will be delayed as well as the start of the season, which will begin to cut into the 162 of the regular season where okay. pay, players will not get paid. Um, but I don't know the exact stuff because it's been so much back and forth. I'm looking into it, but it's just – I mean, it's really just about money that the – because baseball players kind of get screwed. Baseball players have to go through, like, basically eight, nine years before they can go into arbitration or into free agency and stuff. At that point, it's like you're already 28 sometimes and whatnot. It's just like yeah. your prime could still – like, you know, your prime still there, but at the same time, like football players, basketball players get paid two or three times before you get paid at that point. So it's just like right. you get the fun, few players that get paid bank, but then other players, you know, they're sitting on there three $3, 4000000 million, which is a lot. But at the same time, when you're a top position player and you're getting paid pennies to the dollar, it's just – so they're trying to work that out, and it's just ownership just doesn't want to do it. I mean, you know, I get you not wanting to pay a crazy amount of money, but at the same time, it's going. I just, I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought the lock would be over by now, but I mean, we have three days or so before to determine it. Right. So we'll see what happens. There's drama in everything we do. There's always drama in sports. Always, always. You can't take the humanity out of it. You can't. Nope. And your, fa- your favorite man in the world for football, Aaron Rodgers. 
is the king of drama as well. <laughs> king of drama. I know you like him. Love him, but Matthew Stafford leaves Detroit, goes wins the Super Bowl before Matthew Stafford can win within this decade, or uh, Aaron Rodgers can win within the decade. I just want to say, fuck you, Aaron Rodgers, because you're overrated as shit. My yeah. God. Um, he came out. I feel like I got I got pretty heated by that, but he came out saying. After his little vacation period, he was like, I'm going to, you know, I don't know, take my teammates because I want to like, forge forever. And it's the icing on the cake to, like, the game that we get to play every day and whatever. It's a total retirement spiel. And then he goes yeah. on the McAfee show and says, hey, I haven't made my decision yet. So I just have a quick message for Aaron Rodgers. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Shut, Shut the, the hell, hell up. up. First of all, the guy leaves your division that you were in, never winning the playoffs, or winning the division, never making the playoffs except for one time and loses, and goes and wins the Super Bowl. And Rodgers, you're not that guy, boss. Trust me, you're not that freaking guy. Okay? And second of all, you couldn't see San Francisco. What? And I'm not going to take you seriously at all. Like, at all. And then you make it to the end of the championship for the last, what, three years it was? And loses. Yeah. Game. So, like, Aaron Rodgers, you haven't won anything in 10 years, 11 years, I believe. Shut the hell up. Went. Just went something. I don't want to hear this drama bullshit. Are you, are you vaccinated? Are you not? Are you going to come back? Are you not? Figure your life out, figure something out, and then win the Super Bowl. Until then, I'm not going to listen to you. This is just stupid. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, that was Cowboys choice for over again. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, no, you're definitely a little heated there, but that's that's fair. Um, do, you, do you think we should pay attention to this? Like, if you retire, that's like that big of a deal? I think just because of because. Who he is, people will, but I personally care less about it. Okay. 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 Like I, I'm a Atlanta fan. I don't like him. Right. Right. I'm also not 100 percent sure the connection might have cut out for a bit there. It's a little static on my side, so I'm not sure about yours. Okay. Just making sure. Um. Yeah. No. I mean. I just, I don't like Aaron Rodgers, so I really don't care what he says. And I don't even like to waste my breath talking about that. It's not worth it. I'm not sure that's surprising. I feel like this is like this off the top end, but at least we disagree. But I'm the on team of the most efficient. We can both care. We can both care less somehow. Yeah. I just, I don't like him. I don't like him at all. Just like, just like, who the hell is the to the American, American public and said, and says, like, like, it's fractured. Fractured. like, like, dude, dude, get, get over, over yourself. Over yourself. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And he just broke over with his girlfriend. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. So, so, on to the, on to the next one. Good riddance. Riddance. Happy for her. Happy, happy for her. Happy for her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Screw that. Screw that guy. When something again, something again, then talk. Okay. Okay. When something, when something. Got. What's next? What's next? What's yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been the only one in the Is the only one that's more than half like half besides the side talking. I mean, really, I feel like we got to go in our NBA. I mean, you got All Star Weekend happened, which. John Contest was, was. I don't want to talk about that. That was just yeah, we're sad. Good, we're good. We're good. We're totally totally yeah. fine. Nice <laughs> <little bit. laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. It was a good weekend overall. You know, Sar showed out, but at the same time, it's just, it's just there's no defense, which makes me a little sad. LeBron's back on. Uh, season's back going tonight. When do you feel when, when LeBron made that shot, shot in that game? To win, to win 
It feels scripted, honestly. It feels a little scripted. Oh. Just saying. Just saying. I completely agree. So I feel like this was one of those times where we discussed LeBron and Jordan. I feel like that's going to end up happening here. That shot is shot, of course. You know what I mean? That shot is shot, of course. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like Steph Curry was going so far off, and then you get the last shot to LeBron when Steph Curry was making shots from the other side of the court and stuff. LeBron just does a fadeaway. It just seems too scripted. And there is no reason. There's nothing scripted about it. Why would they be scripted during a game? Like why? It's hometown. Come back. Win it. Come on now. Come on now. He's not, listen, don't get me wrong. Amazing shot. Great, great. Amazing shot. Why do you think anything away from his shot? shot? I'm not taking away from the shot, but I'm just like, come on now. Like, come on. 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 Like, Oh, we're gonna stop this right now. Okay, we're gonna. <laughs> what more does this man have to do for you to respect him like I do? Like, what else? The dude does it all. If he if he can become the all time leading scorer, I would then accept it. Until then, he already did. No, I'm talking about be be number one. I know what you're talking about, but no, not that. Go look at the stat line. He has to be. He has to have the top points. You're going to look it up now. At all times. Yeah. It is LeBron. He beat, Car- he beat Kareem. That's just postseason included. I'm talking about not postseason included. Okay, and regular season. Reg. Yeah. Season. LeBron. Points. I'm going to pull this up because this is. Okay, so he needs to make. Kareem Abdul Jabbar has 38,387 points. LeBron has 36,348. He's 600 points behind Karl Malone. And then he is 2,600 points away from Kareem. And you're telling me... Yes, he has to be ahead of Kareem. In order for you to respect him? Oh, no, I respect him. But if you want me to call him the GOAT, he has to be ahead of Kareem. And I I know it burns you inside that I will not call him the GOAT. It kills me. He is the freaking goat. He, this he's a goat. Of, he's not the goat. This kid, this kid came out of fucking high school with the world on his shoulder shoulders, carries a team in Cleveland with people like me and you to a finals. <laughs> okay, that's why he made it to 10 and lost four or six. Like, that is why. He that's, carries that's just a lot of losses. Just saying, it's a lot of losses. So you carry a team as a rookie to like your fourth or fifth year before leaving to Miami, all the way to the finals, kicking and screaming with no one. And then you go up against Golden State Warriors, mind you, that went 73 and nine and then added Kevin Durant. And you're expecting this guy to be perfect when Jordan was literally the guy that was on the 73 and nine team. Or 72 and 10 or whatever it was. Listen, LeBron, listen, LeBron could have easily never lost in Miami. He could have just gone off in Miami. But he had to leave to win it. He had to leave to win. You're telling me if he didn't leave to Miami, he would have won championships in Cleveland beforehand. If Cleveland invested in him, like Chicago invested in Jordan, yes. Yes. I'm with you. But you can't say on national, well, not even national, YouTube <laughs> podcast that Cleveland invested in him at all. Like, there's no way. No, did they that. did not. And I know that. I know that. But also, LeBron has also made it to the point where he invests in himself by picking players. And how's that turning out now? Well, maybe that's our segue. Let's just change the subject. <laughs> let's, kill you. Let's, just, let's just address the elephant in the room. Why not? Westbrook, good good player. Glad he picked him. Anyhow, yeah. So 
on a major more note, speaking of Lakers, AD's out now. He's out for a couple of weeks with the spray, ankle sprain. They're still number nine. He's not the only. Right? They're still number I, nine. I'd have to look. I'd have to look. Uh, do you think they make the playoffs or not, though? I I believe my take on the last pod was I know, but I'm I'm confirming or not now with AD out. They don't even make the play. They'll be out weeks. I I think I said they didn't make the play in, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be surprised. Like, I'll even be surprised if they're in content, like contention for the plan. I'll be very okay. surprised. I, I'm, I'm, I agree with that. I feel like 80, 80 being out just d- destroys any chance they had. Like, he's going to be out for too many weeks, too long, I feel like, for it to happen. Um, I was also just looking at scores and said that my Hawks just lost, but that, that's cool. I'm going to cry about that I'm later. Not, I think so. Um, uh, the Bulls, it was a close game. We only lost by four. Okay. Free throws at the end. So I'll take it. I'll take it. But um, other big name players that are getting out now. This might be the biggest in, in the league, in my opinion. Chris yeah. Paul, broken thumb, out for yeah, six to eight weeks. Yes. <laughs> they're yeah, still going to make the playoffs. Out, yeah, they're still going to make the playoffs. Out. But that's a, that's, a, that's a big deal. Big that deal. That is huge. Six to eight weeks, that's just realistic when you think about it. That puts us in – it's February, the end of February. That will put us at the beginning. Put, that puts it – Mid-April? To like yeah. Eight, right? Yeah. That's, that's a lot of games. That's regular season two, right? So that's all about seeding. Do I see them losing the – getting out of the top four? No. No, yeah. But do I see them getting a tough out? Oh. 100%. Do I see them getting – I don't know. I mean, can you right, imagine if right, they get, like, right a big seed and then here, the here's Nuggets the good news. come in? There's seven up over Warriors who are in second for now. The second seed. So, there's seven up. Okay. But at the same time, he's going to miss – I mean, you're missing a lot of games. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know how many – so, like, how much, how much can Booker carry your team now is the question because yeah. he has to. Which he could. Like, I think that's important to say. He can. Yeah. Like, he's shown that. But do you rather want him to carry you through the regular season or the playoffs? Pick. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I think – I definitely don't see them dropping out top four. I see. I could see them drop – I could see them, you know, drop into two or three, depending on how the Warriors and Grizzlies do. But the Grizzlies also just suffered an injury that we don't know about. John Morant went out, went out Literally tonight with like injury. Literally, like, 30 it, minutes ago. It looked bad. I'm not going to lie. Like, he was walking, but he was he was hopping strange. I don't know if you saw the video, but I, it was I it looked not. weird. It okay. looked weird. So, I don't – so, I have no clue what it is. I wish him a speedy recovery. Yep. But if he's out for a while also, Grizzlies – Grizzlies could drop. I could see them dropping a fair bit. Still playoffs, but I could see – I could see them dropping a six. Like, they could drop Whoa. all the way down to six. If he's out for a long period of time, like a long and period of time. Where do you see Phoenix dropping to? I can see them dropping two or three. But, I mean, that's the lowest. I, I think – I don't see them getting out of top three. Okay. They're just – they have too much of a lead, I think, as is. But it's also, like, going to stake or going to tear at any moment. But if the if John Moran's out with the Grizzlies for, like, you know, four to six weeks as well, minimum, if not worse – I mean, they lost to Minnesota tonight. Phoenix won against OKC, but it's OKC. You're expected to beat OKC. I just, I just don't see them. They're both going to make playoffs, but that's a big. Those are both massive injuries. You know, I hope. Unfortunately, we know what Chris Paul's injury is, and that's it's two months almost. Hopefully, John Morant is just like a you know, tweaked little ankle, maybe like a week. But at the same time, fits something massive. If without him, I don't see the Grizzlies going far at all. Okay, but I, you know what? Honestly, I think we might be overreacting because this is why. Okay. Dallas, they're big time. Right? Freaking Luka lost a bunch of weight. He's on this tear. He's competing with Joel Embiid for MVP of the season. Denver, I mean, Nikola Jokic. I mean, Murray we talked about last time. Aaron Gordon, all those guys, right? Yeah. Even if, even if, even if Memphis drops to six, 
who did I have him playing? If everything stays still, and I could have him playing Phoenix. Do we trust? I mean, if Phoenix drops a three. I mean, at that point, if, if Phoenix if Phoenix plays Memphis and you're getting – if Chris Paul is healthy again, even with John Murray Anthony, I'm sorry, Memphis, you're done. You're saying the you're saying the Suns aren't going to beat Memphis? I like that matchup, and I would go really? with Memphis, dude. John Morant has both Chris Paul skills and Devin Booker skills in one. Yeah, he will take them. He will take them to the freaking end of the world and like kicking and screaming Memphis. But Memphis has the big body. Memphis has those big bodies that can stop the D- 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 in right. They have yeah. the defense. I mean, yeah, okay. Mikel Bridges, Cam Maker, uh, Cam, um, what's his last name? Something Cam uh, Maker. Uh, Thomas? No. You know I'm awful with names. You oh, always tell yeah. me. <laughs> if it's not numbers, I don't want it. You know what I mean? Basically. I mean, listen, I think it would be a great matchup, but I still think Phoenix is just – Phoenix would have home court. Cam Johnson. Ah. Too, too simple of a name for me. You I know just, what, though, man? I like that. I like that. I mean, like, look, even look at Memphis's, like, roster. Let's just name some of these guys for you, okay? And this is if – I mean, Chris Paul is old. Josh I think he, the only difference I see – they're both very new match. The difference, though, is the fact that Phoenix holds their opponents to about five less points a game. Okay. Which which is a big deal right now. Like right now, points per game, Phoenix and Memphis are the exact same offensive wise. Yeah. But but the defense wise, that's the big thing. But also, I mean, it really just matters what John Rand's injury is. Yeah, man. I and I but think I, that's that, the biggest thing. Speed of recovery, but I mean when you're you're playing and you're getting 27, 6, and 7. I like that. I like that. He's the pulse of the team, you know, and hopefully yeah. his injury doesn't go crazy. I mean, even in the injury, he dropped 28, eight or no, 20. I mean, he, he, got, he got injured late in the game. So he was, that was before, the, but I mean, still the second he went out, their offense sputtered. I mean, given, given, you know, it, you're not expecting, so maybe over time that, you know, they'll be able to work something, but we'll see. It's I mean, a big one in my opinion. It, it really does shake up the West. And yep. in the West, it's already shaken. So the West is shaken. The East has been shaken. I mean, the East could even get more shaken now. I mean, one. Let's I mean, let's look at these injuries right now. Zion could have another surgery. He's still in the West, but is Zion gonna play for New Orleans again? Do you think? There's no way in hell. There is no I mean, the lone fact that he wouldn't even talk. Yeah. Freaking CJ McCollum, McCollum. Top 50 player in the league. He's gone. This guy's gone. Yeah. There's no way he's. He doesn't. Yeah. He's upset with leadership. The man, you know, the man hasn't played in a long time. If he, if he has to have a second surgery, who knows how many step back, setbacks he has? And he's already fat. Like, it's sad to say yeah. he's fat. Yeah. Like, you know? Where do you think he goes? He's going to be a Nick. He's going to be a Nick. I don't think so. Wait, I, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Love to. I just don't see it happening. One, with the current team, they, they want to get um traded from the Hawks. Cam Rush, they want him gone. The coach doesn't like him. Okay. So all you have so if Cam Reddish was like there, then Nick 100 percent Because at that point you get you get your Duke players back. But the fact they don't that they don't like Cam Reddish there, it's just like I just feel like he's like, you know what, I don't want to have these college players thinking that they're the shit again when right now none of them approved anything in the pros. That's fair. Um, I honestly could not tell you where he goes, but I know he doesn't want to play in New Orleans. <laughs> For sure. I mean, that, that, that's the easiest fact I can tell you. Um, but I think it really just depends. If it's a trade, it could be anywhere. But if it's free agency, I think he gets out of the West at least. But no. does he go to the Knicks? He might want to, but at the same time, does the coaches want him? You haven't proven shit. You're fat. Like you said, you're fat. You've had two foot surgeries, and you're still getting setbacks. 
or one foot surgery, possibly a second with more setbacks. Like you're going to have to go G League to prove it if you go to the Knicks. And he's not going to go to G League. But okay. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you in your logic. I'm with you with everything. Currently, as everything stands, the Knicks are 12th. You're t- when Zion was coming out of Duke, he was saying he wants to be a Nick. He did not want to be in New Orleans at all. He, he wanted to be anywhere but New Orleans. This man would have played in Europe if he knew he was going to New Orleans. Do you not see a situation with now Kemba being sidelined? That they package Julius Randle and Kemba for Zion and maybe Zion with a couple picks? I mean, like, the thought... The thought sounds great. I just – I don't see the Knicks getting rid of Randall right now. That's the problem. Well, they should. They should. Right. But also, I feel like Kimba has proven himself enough in the league that he can be like, I'm not going to New Orleans. But he's but also same time, sidelined in New York. So, like – That's true. But also, like, it's possible – I mean, I don't know. I don't know how their relationship is when it comes to – with CJ and McCollum, but – Right. It's possible. That's the thing. Like, it could easily bring take it to the Knicks, but I mean, let's think of what other teams. Like, I don't see him going yeah. to Washington. I don't see him going no. to – I mean, maybe Toronto, but not really. Uh, that's who I thought of just now, honestly. I thought Toronto. Yeah. But they've also sold off so much. Right. Crazy? Crazy thought maybe? Maybe hot take? Charlotte Hornets. You know what? You like it too. I hate to say that. I don't like to admit that I like that my own words. I wish I didn't like that, but. I like that. Shout out Charlotte. I I had a red eye layover in Charlotte, but him and Lonzo could be something. I mean, if. With Miles Bridges. Based off of the fact that this is the college Zion. This is the college Zion. I said, yeah. I mean, the, the other thing also, Charlotte. Nearby where he played college. Right. But he also, I could be wrong, but isn't Zion from Atlanta? Who? Isn't he from from Atlanta, I think? Zion? Zion? No. No, he's from he's from South Carolina. So I mean it spicy. With Jordan too, right? Yeah, that's the other thing. Get yeah, Jordan. So Good. it's a great role model there. One. <laughs> Shout out to my mom for yeah. making me to the podcast. No, I'm not that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh god. Listen, she'll make a guest appearance one day. You muted me. Well, everyone, since I'm here by myself right now, I think Charlotte's the best pick for it. Well, Dean might hate me for it, but I think Charlotte. Knicks, it's just too much of a cap out, in my opinion. The Knicks could easily just take him, but I don't see it either way. He's not staying in New Orleans. That much I can guarantee. God. Games tonight were good, though. I'm so sorry. What I was going to say is, what do you feel about Zion to Dallas? What you know, you I was literally talking that? to myself. When you mute yourself, I was having a discussion with our fans and our audience about Zion leaving New Orleans, probably for Charlotte because I like that a lot. Okay. But I didn't think about Dallas. I won't lie. I mean, I don't – I wouldn't love – I wouldn't hate that. I mean, him and Luke I wouldn't either. The only thing is he would have he would have to lose a lot of weight, but also I don't know if Dallas wants to give up that much for him. I mean, what what left do you have? You gave up Chris Stapps. I mean – that, that if it's a lot, so it, well, I think that's important. If it's a free agent move, oh yeah, Adam. Yeah, totally if it's Adam. if it free agent, I free agency. I could see Dallas. I could see Charlotte. I could see maybe San Antonio, depending on who they pick up in the next year or two, or maybe just because. I thought about that, but at the same time, he clearly doesn't like C.J. McCollum, which means that Dame won't like him. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so maybe 
If it's in a trade, it's more likely going to be Knicks. Maybe the Pacers in a trade, depending on how much they want to give up. But I mean, they have the pieces. I mean, they just that's have what I'm saying. Pieces. I mean, also, OKC you could trade for anyone. They have enough picks for the whole world. <laughs> I mean, Don't OKC could stop anyone. World War Three. Yeah, <laughs> OKC could be like Russia. Here, here's some picks. We're done. Okay, whoa. <laughs> Oh, um, no more World War Three. It's all good. Yeah. Thank but, you, Oklahoma. Yeah. No, there's no way he stays. I, I just don't see him. I, yeah, that's. I said that also while you were mute. I said, there, I said, there's no physical way he's staying in New Orleans. There's no way. And if he does, I will be. They Stop. had to pay them. They they were like, here's 500 mil one year. Basically, is yeah. what they were doing. Like, that's like he he just doesn't want to be there. Um, like he wants out of New Orleans more than Hardy wanted out of Houston. Yeah, in my opinion. But speaking of Harden, tomorrow night he's supposed to make his debut. Dude, I'm pumped. Big. This is big. It's gonna be interesting. I don't know how well they're gonna mesh at first. To be honest, I, I don't even know who they play. They play. Um, is it Memphis or Charlotte? Uh, oh no, my- Minnesota. Ooh, Minnesota's a tough team. But then beat going off. So what do you think? What do you think? They're like, what should we expect? Like, what should we be expecting from Harden? What Harden and Embiid from both of them. With them being the players that they are individually, I definitely think it, you know they're going to show off. My only thing is, my only thing is, how much can they mesh? Because it's Embiid's team, and Harden has to know that. If Harden doesn't know that they're done for like they're not done for because they're going to make the playoffs either way right but if they mesh well i could see them making a push for the one or two seed they're only three games back right now from one okay two and a half from two but the problem right now is also from three the seven right now in the east is separated by two and a half games yeah so if they don't mesh well they could drop, and seven's a playing team. I don't think they'll make it there because other teams have to go on a mad run. I'd say if they don't mesh well, they probably end up four or five. If they mesh well, they could push for two, one or two. But I think they stay top five. They, yeah. I don't I think this because, whole Boston thing kind of dies out. I don't know how you feel about this. Yeah. I mean, right now you can – Six through 11 right now, even 12, you want to add New York Knicks in there from the East. It's a shit show. I mean, you could flip a coin. Like, the Knicks could win three straight all of a sudden and be in the playoffs and lose five in a row. That's how, the, Hawks, the Hawks can do that as well. The Wizards can do that. Charlotte can do it just as much. The problem I see right now, I don't want to push away if you want to still talk about Harden, but the Nets, the Nets have lost two more in a row. They don't look good. They got blown out tonight by Boston, 129-106. Yeah. Given Durant should come back eventually, Mm -hmm. Kyrie might be able to play home games in a week or two, apparently. They're lifting the mandate, possibly. Mm -hmm. Ben Simmons has been practicing with Kyle Korver. Korver is a shooter, a really good shooter, one of my favorite. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. But the thing – just. Like, Kyrie talked about how they're going to be a scary lineup, but, like, right now, they ain't looking scary at all. At all. So, like, I don't know. Let's look, see who even played this game for them. Because I really – I mean, you've got Curry, and that's pretty much – Curry and Drummond and Mills. I mean, you got your players, but – your big name, you had none of your big, big name players in. Right. You but, said Drummond was in, correct? Yeah, Drummond was in. He played 20 minutes, 11 points, six rebounds, one assist. I mean, Curry was your best player right now, 22 points, seven rebounds, one assist. That was your best player tonight. Right. I mean, that, and he's also a supporting player. really up-and-coming Boston team, so I'm not totally yeah. upset at that. I'm not, but also, like, you got blown out. I know you're missing, like, you're missing your big-name players, but 
if you're missing your big name players for much longer, you're going to drop. But I think we need to, I think we need to slow down a little bit okay. um, and, and, and think of how big this New York lifting the mandate is. That is massive. That or is it going to be too late? Do you think though? I mean, how many weeks? There's like about what? How many home? How many home? I think I think it really just depends how many home games they have left. Well, it wouldn't matter at that point. Let's say he comes in with twelve games left, right? No, I know. I'm saying if they if most of their games are home and the mandate gets lifted, it's huge for New York. It's huge for the Nets. Because at that point, he can play everything. But if most of their games are away and gets lifted, it really doesn't change anything. What matters is the playoffs. That's when it becomes big. But they have to make it past the play-in round game. But who would they be playing in the play-in? Right now, right now they're eight. So they'd be playing Charlotte. I, I, I honestly think they're fine, man. I, there's... If, if they play Charlotte, they're fine. I think they could easily go, even if they have away games. I think they could go if, if uh, like they get twelve games left with Kyrie, they could easily win what eight of the four, and then yeah. if they win four more games, they're in fifth, a game behind Milwaukee. You know what I mean? If everything kind of stays similar, so do you, do you think if the mandate doesn't get lifted, that it's better for? Brooklyn to play away instead of home because that way Kurt Irving can play. If the man did, I mean, it doesn't matter if the man gets lifted, this whole conversation goes out the window. It's like, well, right. that was a waste of our time. But still, the thought and the just the, you know, the, hmm, because right now, if Brooklyn plays Charlotte, you're playing in Brooklyn, which means yeah. Irving's out at his current moment. But if it's- you lose another game or two, you flip spots if you could flip spots honestly i would even dare to say with atlanta i don't think they want to play atlanta no 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 i would I, what i'm saying is if they could get to the 10th seed and okay every playing game away that's yeah, I mean, huge that's huge yeah if the mandate doesn't get lifted i think i think brooklyn would rather be playing as the underdog and the lower seat and everything just because it gives them one more game with Kyrie Irving. But they got to start winning either way. Because if they start losing more, it ain't going to look pretty. I'm going to say this, too. and Maybe this is a hot take. I would say even with the mandate being lifted, I don't see them coming out of the East. Oh, no. They are not. They're not winning the East. Okay. I, I don't. They're not going to win. That much I agree. I I. I don't know who wins these, but it's not going to be them. I think they might be a second round max. That's honestly where I feel like they belong. I don't see them going to the Eastern Conference Finals, beating Miami, the Bulls, Sixers, Milwaukee, even Cleveland. I don't see that yeah. at all. I mean, did we, let's see, who do we – we made – I mean, in the East, you had your, you had your top two teams as Bucks and Nets. When we the first podcast, I know, I know. <laughs> so much just to remind. You, just want to remind you of that little, little bit. Though. Don't forget, there's money on the line on this one too. But this is uh, my thing. This is my thing. Like they could, they could. It's I possible. Just to they had the players. If they had the players, but as of right now, Kyrie, like yeah, if the mandates lifted, he could still miss games because he stubbed his toe. I mean, for the love of God, this guy is not consistent. So like. I'm going off of that fact. I'm betting against Kyrie more than I'm betting for Kyrie. Yeah. Ben Simmons, let's see if Kyle Korver could get him a shot. But if he doesn't, then it's just KD shooting the ball. Then, like, what's the difference? You just have a bigger body and drumming and, like, some defense. I don't see that winning, yeah. you know? No, you're right. But then they could it's... easily come back and say Kyrie's a bucket, Durant's a bucket, and Simmons has a shot and defense. They could win the East, you know? Yeah. Very easily. I just can't give it to them until they show it to me. Yeah. I mean, they're going to have drama with them no matter what. Because, one, you got Curry over there talking about how he doesn't think Ben Simmons owes anyone an apology, which is interesting for from, from me because Curry was in, was in Philadelphia having to deal with all of Ben Simmons' bullshit. 
Right. And he, I think, you know, if he was still on the 76ers, maybe he says it differently. But because he's on the Nets now with him where he's going to play. But for also all we know, maybe they can still be best friends. For all, like, we just know Embiid and, and Simmons ha- hated each other. But I mean, like, look, you, like you said, if he was on the, the Sixers, maybe he says something different. Danny yeah. Green comes out and says the exact different thing. Yeah, right? says he he won't. Which that that's interesting. I I want to watch that game whenever they go back to Philly. Does Ben play? Do you agree with Danny or not? Does Ben play? He hundred percent plays, and he hundred percent exactly comes out with the shot. He comes out with the shot, and just is shooting all game. Draining. I see him. I see him dropping in his comeback. I want to say twenty eight and eight. That's what I think he's coming. Okay. With. I think what Ben Simmons dreams of nightly is coming back to Philadelphia and shooting a game winner over Embiid. That's what Ben Simmons dreams nightly. He wants that nightly. I, that's what I would dream of. Oh, a hundred percent. I would have never like, thought of it. Because Durant's there, but uh, yeah, he just maybe wants not even like shooting a Kawhi maybe. Leonard shot over Embiid. That that or dunking over Embiid to win it. One of the two. Yep. If he dunked on Embiid to win it, I'm sorry, Embiid. Pack your bags. You're missing a game. I can't look at you right now. <laughs> like I don't want to look at you. You just let Ben Simmons in. Like no, no. Yeah, go 100%. home. Go home. Passing up that shot. In the bubble, you dunking, yamming it on your face. Oh my god, I it would bring me such joy. What do you think his stat line is coming back though? Is he gonna be slow like Clay and just shoot or do what he's good at, or do you see him dropping some points? I I don't think quite as much as you think. I think he would drop a double double, maybe like twenty two and like thirteen though. I feel like he's going to more assist. Okay. But that he's going to drop points, but I feel like he's, I think it was going to happen. He's going to drop points early. And then people are going to have to start respecting and actually attempt to guard him. And then he's going to be able to pass that ball off a lot for some easy points for his teammates. I think he's going to be, I think in that game specifically, too, he's going to be wanting to play against Embiid a lot. We're yeah. going to see a lot of Embiid against Simmons because, I mean, Simmons is, could guard all five. He, could, he really can. He's very so, good. He's very good defensively. I, I think is also the Simmons. Simmons could just pass the ball to Curry for an easy three every time, because right. Curry Curry loved Philadelphia when he came to that. I mean, that boy shot crazy there, like so. That's not not a problem whatsoever for them. Totally, but it's I gonna mean, be interesting. Spicy, March tenth, right? March tenth is that game. Yeah, March tenth. At that point, we're March Madness too. I'm. So not caught up with college basketball. So but, far out of it. You know what? Maybe this is the perfect time where we can put money on the bet. I feel like that's what we should do. Okay. I like Let's to lean it. forward. I mean, this is right, 100% shot in the dark. Like, there's never have been a more shot in the dark moment than this. Okay. I got I got fingers ready. Well, Who's your team? Who, who are you going to rock with? That's just, that's just – maybe that's the team we think we can get the furthest. Oh, God. Let's look at this. Let's take a moment. I have, I mean, I'm so far. Like, the only thing I pay attention to college basketball right now is when it comes to prize picks and my bets that are not hitting in college basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not great. Um, let's look at these. I love a good underdog story for March Madness. I think everyone does, but I, I mean, I thrive all of it. But, I can't even root for a Georgia team because they are dog water right now. Yep. Oh my god, it's not even funny. Um, I'm thinking. Do you have a team in mind? You have a team in mind. You. Okay, let's hear your team. I guarantee you, mine will be different. (laughs) I feel like it's Gonzaga. Okay. They're oh, and I know you would say that. And I know they're always in it. They're always in it. Maybe it's a safe bet, but do we not okay. see them winning at if all? You had to, if you have to pick an underdog as well. Okay, an underdog. As well. While you think of that, I will think. Of... Hmm. 
Okay. I like Purdue this year. From what I've seen about them, I like them. I think my, my top pick would be Purdue. Okay. I, 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 I could get behind that. I could get behind that. Yeah. I mean, I, I still think it's Zaga, but I, I could get behind as that. As much as I would like to say Auburn, I also can't say Auburn as a Georgia man. It's against every fiber in my body to even speak of that name. I'm sorry if anyone here likes Auburn. Please roast me in the comments for all I care about. Or stop listening to the podcast, either or. I mean, no, there's, there's yeah, either or. But, but, you know, feel free to roast me before you stop. I really don't care because <laughs> you're not going to win it. I'm sorry. Um, Dude, underdog, though. Underdog is tough. Underdog is tough because I haven't seen anyone. I know. I haven't watched play. enough. I mean, I maybe watch this is a hot take, TV. but I will – I will. I'm going to say – U of M, University of Michigan. Juwan Howard. You know, this is interesting. Defended five games. I yeah. see that team coming out hot. And you, what are they you say? You say terms? Michigan, and I was going to say Michigan State. See, they're both nine and seven right now. They're both. What is that? I think Michigan State currently is a, a game ahead. Or, but they're, they're more than nine. Michigan Michigan State is. 18 and 8 total from what I think from what I can see. I'm not sure. Let's see, I don't see Michigan, but I can look real Michigan fast. Michigan is 15 and 11, 9 and 3. Okay. Overall, they're 15 and 11. But I don't yeah. know. I see Jawan Howard coming back and that team fighting for this kid, this guy. And I get it. They have a TikToker on their team that plays on the bench and he TikToks like the whole time. But you know what, man? Like at the end of the day, your U of M, they have buckets. But shout out Jed, who I know listens to this. Go U of M. Go Blue Baby. That's that's my underdog. That's it. I'm gonna live by it. You know, I think I think it's only fair the fact that we picked rivals for underdogs. It's only right. Like when you started talking, I was like, I swear to God, if you pick Michigan State, I'm gonna be upset. And then you said U of M, and I was just like, I could rock, I could rock with my pick even more now. Because don't get me wrong. One, would I love to see my underdog win. Two, your rival pick wins. Just makes me happy when I win and you lose. I love you. But it just makes me happy when I get to be right and you don't. So let's make it a little bit more right. And there we go. Ten bucks. I mean, at this point, why not? Ten bucks. Okay. So you got Gonzaga and Michigan. I think honestly, this underdog pick is the more like this is the one that has the money on the line. Because oh yeah, no. Half of my half of my family live in Michigan. So half of them love state, half of them loves U of M. Half yeah, of no, them I'm a little afraid of this. That's that's just the gods on this route. I'm a little afraid of the friends that I have up north up there right now that like Michigan, that I'm definitely gonna get a couple couple not not nice word to text from. I know this for a right. fact because I send them that all, all the time. They talk one about my team. So karma is going to come real back, real fast back at me. But I'm sticking to it. I have no shame. Um, I mean, oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah, that one's going to come at me real fast. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, I think that's – I think that is just the way we should end the show off of that note. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll you know what? Before, actually, we'll have we might get another podcast before March starts up. But either way, we'll have brackets ready. If it's not next, the week before, we'll have some brackets ready. Yeah, we, totally. we got. I think we have our team. March. Yeah, before March for sure. Um, I might. I guess we'll make two: one for our one for our underdog and one for our non so not so underdog teams. Totally fair. Yeah, maybe. Um. Maybe, Even with maybe the underdog, gonna... I think it's the underdog is whoever gets the furthest. Yeah, know? okay, that's fair. Okay, so okay, I'm so bracket. make a normal bracket. Yeah, I hope my underdog plays Gonzaga and they beat y'all just because then it's going to just bring me joy. I lose money. <laughs> I lose money on both sides. <laughs> yeah, usually, <laughs> I can't do nothing now. <laughs> my team's out. But oh, well, no. Jordan Howard I... will probably just slap you like they he did to Wisconsin's coach. So. <laughs> I watched that video about five times just laughing each time. I was just like, why? You're dumb. What did you think but, of it? What did you think of the punishment? What what did you what did you take? I think I think I think the punishments all around were fair. I mean, like he, okay. he definitely 
the the other coach should have got fined because he definitely like he helped out in the fights, but like he didn't throw hands. So no. the players getting suspended, I get, but at the same time, it's like you got hit by a coach basically in some sense. Like you're not supposed to swing back. Like I know a coach hit more of like another coach, but it's just like if I yeah. got popped, I go for it. So I, I'm just happy Jawan Howard didn't get fired. He didn't get suspended for the rest of the season. Even though that's probably thing the most realistic thing is him say, if they if they if they go out fast, don't make a deep run in the tournament. He's gone. Oh. I, I I believe so. At this point, because he's had two altercations now this year. Yeah, two. And then if you go out early, it's just like, what you doing with the team? Horrible, horrible example for these young men. I'm going to respond but, to that at the start of our next one because I feel like okay. I have some thoughts. Um, oh, God. He's going to come roasting me. I feel it. I love it. I love it. I just haven't paid attention, but that's for the next time. So, now you people listening. Also, I'm not over the fact that LeBron has to pass Kareem in regular season points for you to have some sort of respect for him. I have some respect for him, just not nowhere near as much as you want. But it's going to be okay because we can discuss that more. And the next one? It, no, it's going to happen. We're going to – we're just going to happen. Straight up Jordan, LeBron debate, and March Madness, and Hoas. I'm sorry, any baseball, football, basketball, uh, like soccer. It will be short little bits. Short little bits. We'll update you all on, on MLS. Ten seconds, because I'm going to yeah. roast this kid and thinking that LeBron's not the freaking GOAT. But that's besides the point. We may even have to make our Mar- Mar- Mount Rushmore picks. Like, that's what we might have Ooh. to do. So. I like that idea. And hopefully, hopefully we're going to be starting getting a little more scheduled podcast. Yep. We're aiming Absolutely. for Monday every time. Now that things are starting to calm down with my work and your duties as a higher up in the camp world right now, higher which I'm up. still so happy for. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been it's been a little hectic for us both. But hopefully, hopefully Mondays every week will start to happen. Mondays we'll exact time yet, but we'll have it up and posted yep. so you guys can watch it. So Tuesdays, be on the lookout for sure. If y'all want anything for us to talk about specifically, you know, like Wadid losing more money to me, let me know. <laughs> we'll make it happen. After this Michigan <laughs> team, after this Michigan pick, I'm feeling pretty good. After this Michigan okay. pick, I'm feeling pretty okay. good. So I can't wait to find out. Yeah, be blessed. Much love, everyone. Number three is in the books and looking forward to number four in a couple of days. Yep. All right, guys. Peace. All right. Peace.